you know, it's so wonderful to have this opportunity with Facebook to talk to you, but I'm talking to you to your face, but I'm talking to you out of my heart. And I want to just talk with you about how God gives us the ability to reason and to perceive. And both are in his hands because sometimes people say, well, Christians aren't reasonable. Or, you know, I don't know how to perceive. So I really believe this is going to change your life for the better, for the better. And when I look at this, I see how God through the years has used his reasoning with me and his perceptive, how I can be perceptive. And so, you know, we're a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. And, of course, we want to take care of the body. We just get one for this life, that's for sure. But also, we want our spirit to be alive to God. And you want your soul, which has to do with your mind and your emotions, to be in tune with God. So this is a very important time for you. And I love doing this because I want to talk about reasoning. Because a lot of times people think, oh, Christians are not reasonable. They're just so far out there. But God says in Isaiah 1, 18, Come and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So what does God say? Turn your brain off? You're a Christian? No. He said, come and let us reason together. And I really had God deal with me on reasoning and what would be the best thing to do in a situation. Because I had an offer as a teacher in North Dakota, and I had a boyfriend up there I wanted to be with. And, you know, I thought, wow, this is the way. And probably I could end up marrying him. And so that was my natural reasoning. But I want to talk about God's reasoning. And so God began to reason with me as to should I live in North Dakota and teach up there. Was that his will for me? And so I began to pray about this. Well, God, what do you think? And so God opened a door for me in Pueblo, Colorado, and I taught Spanish in a high school. And that was his reasoning with me, that that was the place for me, not North Dakota. So knowing, learning to let God reason with you out of his word, but also learning to perceive what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and how he wants to guide you. And so I began to teach in Pueblo, and I liked it. I liked the teaching situation. And my brother, who was kind of out of sync with God, was being helped by a man that my mother knew in Denver who was spirit-filled. So my mother said to me, uh, would you mind if this man came with your brother and maybe had lunch with you in Pueblo? Well, you know, he came and he brought my brother, but oh my goodness, he was so religious to me, you know, because all he wanted to talk about was God. I didn't want to just talk about God. I had a lot of things I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about food. I wanted to talk about fun, you know. And it wasn't that I wanted something so terribly immoral, but this was just not so good. But he was nice to my brother, and my brother was going through a hard time. Now, I began to uh, come look at teaching in Denver, and I was offered a position here, which really was more money than what I was making there. So reasoning that would be good. But, you know, when I began to pray about it, I began to feel like God wanted me in Denver. 
to teach in Denver. And so I began to perceive. Now see, this is very, very wonderful for you because I think we think being reasonable is not being spiritual, but God says, come, let us reason together. God is reasonable. And perception, we think, can be spooky. But we learn how to hear with our spirit. So you are body and soul and spirit, and so am I. And I thought this is interesting. Sometimes we don't know how we're hearing in our spirit. So I wanted to give you Luke 24, 32. They said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us? Now, what was going on? God had Jesus come and talk with them. And they said, we got a burning heart. And, you know, he opened the word to us. They began to perceive, though they didn't know it was Jesus until later they hooked in. That was Jesus who was talking to us. So they were in the process. So I think for me and for you, there are processes of learning how God reasons with you and how you perceive. And so I think we can do both. Now, if you never read the Bible, I don't know how you can reason with God. And I know that the Holy Spirit will overshadow to help draw you, but God wants to reason with us. He gave us a brain as well as a body and as well as a spirit. And they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? When God begins to talk to you, you get a burning heart. And you think, wow, this is beyond natural. This is supernatural. This is very important. And I like when Paul came to witness. So, you know, I like to win people to Christ. And sometimes, you know, when we had freedom on planes, to fly a lot, I did a lot of it on airplanes. I really enjoyed it. And I did a lot of home Bible studies and neighborhood things, as well, of course, as the television and the radio. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into the Jews, and for three Sabbaths he reasoned with them from the Scripture. So come and let us reason together. So he showed them the Scripture and how... This is reasonable that this is the Messiah. This is Jesus. He didn't just, oh, you better get it or too late. He reasoned. And I think it's very important that we learn and listen how we can be reasoned with and how we can reason with others. And right now, we're in a very desperate situation all over the world. And I think people's hearts are open. I think they are in my neighborhood. And I think, let's, let's reason with them. Let's don't just go in and blast them. But, you know, what's going on? Is God in this? And what can we do about all these things that are going? And so we reason. Paul did it. Oh, my goodness, he did. But also... Paul perceived, and here is the power of perception, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that we would learn to hear his voice. Now, I think when you start into this, and those of you who are watching me will probably say, yes, yes, you can miss it. But do you give it up and say, well, I... I blew it. So it wasn't really God that told me to do that. No, no, no. You just put that on your experience chart and you try again. And you learn to hear his voice. You learn to perceive. I love teaching this to you because I think this is where we all are. Now, David, I liked how he wrote the Psalms. You know, almost everybody... Every Christian loves Psalms and Proverbs. They're wonderful. But David wrote 
out of his perception. He wrote what he perceived in the Psalms, being in the presence of God. So that's why you like them, is that there is perception in it of his presence to you. So reasoning, yes, God reasons with you. He didn't make you an idiot. He wants to reason with you. And God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And so in spirit, wow. You know, we want our spirits to be in tune with him, but we want it to be sure it's truth. So we put it together. So I'm going to tell you something that happened to me several years ago. A woman came to Denver and said, God told her, she told my assistant, God told her that she was to meet with me, that I had a message for her. Now, God hadn't told me. He hadn't told my assistant. And that woman spent all that money to come out, and I'm not here. You know, so that's how you can get out of sync. And that's what all of us, we get nervous, and we think, oh, I, I don't want to be out of sync. But if we can, even with practice, learn how he reasons with us and how we perceive. So some of my practice, you know, I landed on my face. <laughs> it wasn't God. But I learned through practice the difference of reasoning with God and perceiving with my spirit. And that's what I want you to see today. That's why I'm doing this today, because you want to know the difference. Now, you can get under a satanic influence. You say, well, I'm a Christian. I couldn't. Well, wait a minute. In Luke 9:54, when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to come in fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? <laughs> because they weren't turned on to Jesus. And Jesus said, no, 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 you don't know what spirit you're of. So, again, they learned by practice. You learn by practice. I learn by practice. But I get better all the time of hearing, let us reason together. Let us perceive that this is his voice speaking to me. And I remember when my husband passed away, and we had a long, good marriage, but the morning that he passed away, I awakened singing in tongues. What was alive? My spirit. And God brought me through that time, carried me all the way through it, and it was a very perceptive time. I wanted it to be. So your spirit can change, oh, your circumstances. I really want you to get this. Because if you remember, David, uh, Bathsheba was pregnant, and she was about to have the child, and it looked like the child was not going to make it. She had the baby. And David, oh, he prayed. You know, he really hung in tight. And then he heard them whispering, and he perceived that the child was dead. And he got up washed his face, and he ate something. Now, what is that? He perceived that God had taken that child, and he was not going to carry the grief of it and the wound of it. And, of course, we know he had other children. So I think since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So if, if you really want to tap in, you know, get in the Word, get your faith built up, and then speak out of your knowledge of the Word and your faith. So I do this every morning. You know, I don't always feel, whoopee, it's morning. You know, sometimes we've just had television taping, I'm just, oh, it's morning. I'm exhausted. But I have promises that I speak. 
And so I get up, I make coffee, I speak the promises. And I'm telling you, it helps me get in gear for the day. And I'm going to encourage you to do this because this is reasonable, but it's also opening you up to be perceptive. Could God give you something that you didn't know, give you new things in the Word? Could He give you something for someone in your family or in your church, in your neighborhood that could change their lives? And you say, well, I don't want to be spooky and kooky. No, I don't want you to be either. But I believe if we will put our life in reading the Word, and I have my used-up Bible here, and I, I mark things that he says to me. I put question marks in it because I know God wants us to be reasonable and perceptive. And so that's what I'm going to pray for you today. That you would be open to reasoning, the reasoning of God. And that you would be sensitive to perceive. So when people say, oh, the Spirit told me to do this and it's something just totally crazy. That's not reasonable. Reasoning and perception go together. So I want to pray with you. Are you ready? I love doing this. I love being with you on Facebook. It's an honor. God bless you. So, Father, I am praying for everyone watching this Facebook that we reason with God. Come let us reason together. That we're reasonable. Also, Father, I pray for everyone watching this today that more and more we perceive in our spirit. We're not spooky and kooky, but we learn how to hear the voice of the Spirit. And if we make a mistake, we don't just throw ourselves under the bus, but we ask God to help us that through practice, we learn to reason and perceive and that we read the Bible and we don't reason away the Bible. We let the Bible be our guide in all our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.